His top rank, presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter Mr. Bob Arum, brought to you this evening by AutoZone. Get in the zone. By DraftKings Sportsbook, download the app today. And by C4 Energy, find it at Smith's. It's energy that hits. This fight is scheduled for 12 rounds for the WBO and Ring Magazine Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. Our judges at ringside, Tim Cheatham, David Sutherland, and Steve Weisfeld. And the man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Harvey Dock. And now, to everyone in attendance here inside Michelob Ultra Arena. And to everyone watching on ESPN, this is boxing. This is top rank. And oh, baby, this is the main event. Introducing first, out of the blue corner, presented in association with Jimmy Birchfield's classic entertainment and sports, with his head trainer, Rocky Gonzalez. He weighed in at 139.6 pounds, wearing black and turquoise trunks. His record, 17 victories, with one defeat and one draw. Eight of those victories coming by way of knockout. He is the former NABF lightweight champion. He is making his first world title appearance from Worcester, Massachusetts. Jermaine, the technician, Ortiz. Introducing out of the red corner, presented in association with TakeOver Promotions, with his head trainer, Teofimo Lopez Sr. He weighed in at 139.6 pounds, wearing black trunks with red and gold trim. His record, 19 victories with one defeat. 13 of those victories coming by way of knockout. He is a 2016 Olympian. A lineal world champion in two weight classes. One of the best pound for pound fighters in the world today. He is the former undisputed WBA, IBF, WBO, WBC franchise and ring magazine lightweight world champion. He is one of boxing's greatest showmen. He is the reigning and defending WBO, Ring Magazine, and Linium Junior Welterweight Champion of the World. From Brooklyn, New York, and representing proudly his Honduran heritage, he is the takeover. Harvey Dock is our referee, the 52-year-old from New Jersey. 357 right, bouts into his you career. Your instructions earlier. As a reminder, obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch him up. Good luck. He's refereed two Lopez fights. He's never refereed an Ortiz fight. Strangely, two of the Lopez fights he's refereed were not good outings for Tiafimo. The shocking loss to Camposas Jr. including in that. Earlier tonight, we had a conversation about Teofimo Lopez and how he has performed best when there is chaos surrounding him. That is not the case. He has spent a good part of this year with his son settling him down with a calm businessman approach. What do you expect out of Teofimo tonight? Well, right now, I can just tell you this. I'm surprised that Ortiz came out in the southpaw stance. It's brilliant. He'll be able to slow down the pace a little bit, and that's going to allow Ortiz to set up shop. 
Lopez, on the other hand, when he comes forward, when he has to be an aggressor, he tends to make mistakes. Just look at him when he throws his right hand, his opposite hand will drop. That will give Ortiz opportunities to be able to land counters. As of right now, the strategy right now for me is, is favoring Ortiz. No punches have been landed by either guy, but if he can make Lopez punch, initiate offense, and he can make a miss and make him pay, he can win these rounds. You know Jermaine Ortiz, the challenger coming out in that southpaw yes. stance. He will switch stances. He is naturally right-handed, but in other sports, he can be a lefty and feel great about it. He throws a ball left-handed. And Ortiz, to me, he fights better off his back foot. And he's a better counter puncher from the southpaw stance. Right now, he's using lateral movement, and he's doing exactly what he needs to do is have Lopez come forward, look to initiate offense. Again, Lopez, very explosive, but if you make a miss, there's an opening for him to, to make him pay as well. Lopez stocking well. Not getting hit with anything crazy or foolish. Still staying responsible with his reflexes. It's early right now in the fight. However, he's trying to close the distance to Ortiz. Tries to do so with a right hand behind that jab. Good jab from Ortiz. Ortiz doubles up that jab and came with that southpaw left hand. See, sometimes when you have athleticism, similar to like a Roy Jones, they break rules. They don't always follow the system. You know, technically, they don't follow the system. Tail is that type of fighter. And right now, see the counter right there from Ortiz? Just a little bit off the mark. Wasn't anything hard. Well, you mentioned Roy Jones, obviously one of the yeah. ultimate rule breakers, a guy that could fight you with his hands behind his back. Tia Fimo, whenever the conversation gets to his level of athleticism, we always come upon that common descriptive of he's twitchy. He's yes. dynamic, viper-like twitchy. But he makes mistakes, Tess. He drops the opposite hand when he shoots his right hand down to the body against the southpaw. You saw that against Sandra Martin. You saw that in the lab. There'll be opportunities. And there's what? opportunities I mean, like this test where Ortiz can get physical and get a little bit more aggressive in the inside and try to steal these rounds. Going to the end of round number one. Junior welterweight world championship fight. 15, the National Golden Gloves Finals with Lopez and Ortiz. And Tiafimo won that on points back then. Now number two, Ortiz still southpaw, switch hitter, comes in behind that jab and lands that left hand to the body. It's a technical battle right now, a battle for position, southpaw versus orthodox, getting that lead foot outside. Again, you got more stocking coming. You have Lopez trying to cut off the ring, trying to trap. Ortiz, get him against the ropes, have his moments. Pushing the fight, the tempo, the pace of the fight as well. And Ortiz just laying back, waiting on an opportunity, waiting on a mistake of Lopez. Good feint right there. Quick, quick, quick! Stay off the set, stay off the set. Let's go, we good, we got it. I like the no respect right there from, from Ortiz. Pushing his head down. Getting off with a combination and getting off to the side. The southpaw position, as of right now, I think has Tiafimo Lopez a little bit puzzled. But however, all it takes is one punch from Tiafimo Lopez. And the fight can change in the blink of an eye. You know, you mentioned just moments ago that you like what you saw of Ortiz there. That was noticeable when he had his first big step up against Lomachenko as well. But he died out. At the end, he did. Yes. He fought the early rounds and the middle rounds really well, and then it took a rally by Lomachenko late for Loma to pull that out against Ortiz. And his condition is going to get tested tonight because you have, Ort you have Lopez pretty. coming forward and putting that constant pressure on him. And that's mental. That causes mental fatigue. And also, it causes an opponent to somewhat panic. Ortiz right now, you see him getting off into the center of the ring. That's where he belongs, in the center of the ring. Against the ropes, that's a terrible position. 
and test. That was very unorthodox right there. It was. Very out of, the, out of the blue. Nice sneaky right hand. Almost a leaping right hand from Lopez. Those are the shots you got to be careful from, uh, of Lopez because he's extremely athletic and you don't oh, see yes. those punches coming. He will spring off his feet and lunge with punches, whether it's the jab or a lead right hand. We saw that in that sensational performance against Josh Taylor. Good right shot. hand from Lopez. Tiafimo lands flush there in the closing moments of round number two. Ortiz trying to catch him coming in. But Lopez gaining confidence against the upstart. Right here as Super Bowl weekend has arrived in Vegas. We head to round number three of the WBO Junior Welterweight Millennial World Championship fight. Lopez doing the doing the right thing. Stop, 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 stop. Don't grab him. Don't grab him and spin. Good job by Harvey Duck right there. Intervening right there before things got ugly. But I like the fact that Lopez this round is focusing on one target, and that's down to the body of Ortiz. It's a good start, a good change up in strategy so far. Now you say now you see Teal changing up his strategy. He wants, he wants Ortiz to come forward. Trying something different. Well, he draws him in there, but he didn't fire back with anything. Stop, stop, stop. Don't grab him. Love the exit, right. too. Showing him no respect, getting around him. Exiting that weak side, which is the jab hand side. Good right hand to the right body. hand to the body yes. as Ortiz tried to get out of range. Yes. Maintaining that southpaw stance. Now he darts in nearly a clash of heads. See, and when he darts in, he gets off out to the side and he doesn't allow Teo to be able to counter. Good uppercut from Teo. Just following the head of Ortiz. Trying and to sweep around with that right hand. It was mostly blocked. There's an uppercut on the inside from Ortiz. As Tiafimo shakes it off, laughs it off, and goes right back to the center of the ring. But Ortiz, with that combination punch, did score on the inside against the champion. But can he keep this pace up? Can he keep this focus and concentration all the way through? He lost focus in the Lomachenko fight. Let's see if he learned from that. And let's see if he knows how to manage his energy. you got to know how to manage your energy throughout the course of 12 rounds. Again, Lopez missing. A fighter hates when he miss. Can't stand it when he can't track down his opponent. It's hard to really get your, your, your rhythm when you can't land anything on your opponent. What? What? Really good tactical battle right now. Tactical and technical battle by Ortiz. Left hand from Ortiz as Lopez came forward. Good shot by... The Lopez. right hand, able to find a home. Good counter. Stop it the See the quick hands of Tiafimo. Look at this crowd at Nicola Bolcher Arena at Mandalay Bay to see the showman, the takeover, Tiafimo Lopez, who has a feisty and fiery title challenger opposite him and Jermaine Ortiz. Remember that surge you saw yes. towards the end of that last round? You thought Ortiz was landing punches? Uh, take a look at this. None of them punches really landed on Tiafimo Lopez. A lot of those shots are grazing blows. Nothing solid. Nothing solidly landed on him. Great defense right there from Lopez. Good upper body and head movement from Tiafimo. The turtle, turtle shells for a moment. For three rounds, Ortiz with a 12-9 edge in power punches. Let's check in with Bernardo. 
sense of urgency from Teofimo Lopez's father says, look, first you got to move your head, but more importantly, start throwing combinations, and you've got to go to slow him down to the body. Keep him up, keep him up. That check hook is available for Ortiz. You see the lunging, you see the urgency. What comes with urgency sometimes is mistakes, mistakes. You can force mistakes when someone is urgent and coming in. Take advantage of that. Ortiz right now doing a good job tactically getting out, not allowing Teo to time up with anything. Oh, there it is. Found his timing. That's all it takes right there. One or two shots. Beautiful setup with the right hand down to the body. Sweeping with the left hook from Teofimo Lopez. Now inching forward, feints with the left hand to the body, tried to come with the right hand. Ortiz able to angle out of position, get out the side door to the right. So Lopez seemingly right now is having some success and he's starting to get the rhythm and the exit. He's starting to understand how Ortiz is starting to exit, how he's disengaging and he's trying to take advantage of that now. He backs off looking for Ortiz to come forward. Trying to draw him in now. Yep. See if that right hand opportunity exists as he does say, yeah, come on in. I'm going to put my back against this neutral corner. You come on in and Ortiz does. <laughs> Ortiz says, I will. And he digs to the body. Goes with a right hand, a short right hand upstairs against Tiafimo. These fights are about moments, Tess. That was a great moment right there for Ortiz. He said, okay, you want me to come in? That's a psychological battle going on as well. You want me to come in? I will. I will come in. Guess oh, what? There's a right hook from that southpaw stance against Tiafimo. Remember, Tiafimo, a check hook from Sander Martin, who's not a big puncher, scored a knockdown against him a couple fights ago. Time. Brown. This is exactly what I was talking about. Tiafimo is finally starting to get his rhythm finding the right moment to land that shot right there closing off that exit of ortiz ortiz likes to exit left towards that weak side this time he meets him with the left hook on the inside ortiz took it well give him credit however if he continued to take those type of punches he could end up on the canvas mark kriegel how do you score 39 37 three rounds to one all close not particularly eventful but Jermaine Ortiz has done more to establish what he wants to do in this fight. I thought he answered the challenge, the invitation to the corner very well last round. I'm letting you know right now, Tessa, if, if I was to formulate a game plan for Ortiz, this is exactly what it would have been right here. The southpaw stance, the southpaw stance, inviting Teo. Teo doesn't fight that well coming forward. He fights better, and he takes advantage of fighters that are aggressive and come towards him. As of right now, he's trying to hold it together mentally. I see him, but he's having a hard time tracking down Ortiz. And Ortiz is having a field day right now from the outside. question is, can Teo figure it out? Can he dart in at the right time, Tess, and catch Ortiz? That's the question right now. I'm waiting on it. He Bernard may get it, he may not, Tess. Bernardo, what are they saying in the corner of Ortiz? Rocky Gonzalez is very happy with the performance from Ortiz. They say you can keep winning this fight with just one hand. Keep moving, keep on turning. You keep him moving all fight. And that's what he's continued to do here in round number five, employing that strategy. Then he gets along the ropes and then he ties up Tail, not allowing Tail to work in close. Great tactical work right here. Tim trying Hands to shoulder bump him to create a little bit of Hands space. <laughs> the 
see the frustration see for Lopez. It. Yep. See the frustration. What would you advise right now? You gotta cut off the ring. He has to set up his attack. He's just not gonna walk straight in on Ortiz. Ortiz has a great game plan. He's executing it at the moment. But you gotta set him up. You gotta set traps for him. You see, he keeps moving to his left. Keeps moving to his right, excuse me. You gotta cut that exit off on him. Force him the opposite way. So, Tio, if I'm telling him, throw left hooks, son. Throw left hooks. Again, he exits again. He leaves that open for him. Force him to his right. Make him use his backhand, which is the, the left hand. Constant movement and boxing from Ortiz. See, you saw how again, low those connect just, percentages were that were just flashed up moments ago. Again, not cutting off the ring. Good counter right there from Lopez, but not enough. Needs to put him in combinations. Lopez has only landed 22 of his 124 punches thrown. It's amazing to me. Southpaw stands. You fought a Southpaw. Stop, stop, stop. We're good, we're good. In your last fight, and you're not able to cut off the ring on the Southpaw. You got to get that lead foot outside of his to corner him, not allow him to get around to that outside, and walk left towards that way to force him back right. He does it there, but he don't have the setup shot after, which is the right hand. You want to move him towards your right hand. Ortiz's nickname's the technician, and he's living to it right now. And again, Tiafimo backs off and says, come to me. Come on, play along. There's a power hand from Ortiz. Another counter attempt right there from Lopez, but not enough. He's countering one shot at a time, one punch at a time. He needs more combinations. And there are limited opportunities for those. Yes, because again, Ortiz again, getting on his bike and he's gone. He, he, he punches and he leaves. counter right hand but that was set up there it was see a female constantly trying to close the, the gap and corral Ortiz Ortiz using the lateral movement clicking that southpaw jab Lopez has to keep pressuring keep pressuring keep pressuring hoping for that Ortiz will gas out a bit Lopez taunting Ortiz. Senior, the father of the world champion, who is asking his son to throw more punches and combinations, but was an elusive target with Ortiz, but typically with Lopez. Even with the counter punching, he's throwing multiple punches. Nearly 40% of his punches thrown come in combinations. That's fourth highest among all elite fighters in boxing. Round number seven here. You saw at the end of that sixth round, the frustration of Lopez. He's playing to the crowd. Tiafimo, this is what happened at the bell. As he was playing to the crowd, didn't leave the ring, and said, this is what happened at the end of the last round, saying, hey, come on, let's get this guy to fight. Engage here. But it's been a strategy for Ortiz that has worked out well through the first half of the fight, Tim. Absolutely. And Lopez is hoping for Ortiz to slow down. Ortiz using his legs, being very strategic in there, choosing his spots wisely, when to fight, when not to. Tying up Lopez. It's frustrating, again, when you can't land your offense on your opponent. Think about Floyd Mayweather, guys that faced him. It's frustrating, it's humiliating, and that's what's happening right now with Lopez. Stop, 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 stop. Time, time. Out the head clash. Yeah, you can clash. see blood coming from the left eye. Headbutt. 
And you see the position is not good. Watch this. There's the clash oh. right there. And that blood oh. is gushing down above the eye. And that's a bad spot. Yeah, that happens. Ortiz. That happens with Southpaw versus Orthodox. Usually that happens. Power hands Ten line man. up on the same side. So does the heads. Mike Basil is the cut man. Veteran cut man. One of the very best in the business for Jermaine Ortiz. And when you got righty versus lefty, he's prone to head clashes. Same exit, the same exit. Tail still hasn't figured it out yet. Once again, Ortiz able to get away from that work from Tiafimo. Yeah, but Tess, it's not the it's not the headshots he needs to look for. He needs to look for the bigger target. He needs to look for the body. Yeah, slow him down. Focus on the body. Focus on the body. But again, another strategic move right here from Ortiz, tying him up, not allowing him to work. Looping left hand over the top, partially blocked by Teo. It's like Ortiz may be winning the winning the the, the, the match, but he's not winning the fight. <laughs> he's he's moving across around the ring and he's boxing. He, you know, he's looking sweet, but the crowd is not liking it at all. Right hand from Tiafimo. There it is. Follows it up. And now looking for that groove. Good shot. Giving nice angles uppercut. and coming with the right uppercut. The right uppercut from Tiafimo Lopez. Finding more of a rhythm. Blood coming from the mouth of Ortiz as well. It was the clash of heads that opened up that bad cut on the eye. But that uppercut may have caused damage to the mouth. Relax and breathe. You're good. All right? You mean, you got to keep your hands up. You, you think you did something that got cut. That was a head bump. He's coming with hand again. Has hit double-digit connects. He had 11 punches landed in that seventh round. His best work of the night. Ten of those were power punches. He was 10 of 18 with his power punches. And TV Lopez just missed his uppercut. You see him sneak outside. That's the brilliance and athleticism of Tiafimo Lopez. He was squared up in that position, but the way he was able to get his head outside just missed the mark with that uppercut. If that would have landed, oh. Would have been some problems for Ortiz. So they had to deal with the cut above the eye that came from a clash of heads. There's also blood coming from his mouth after the offensive output in that seventh round from Tiafimo Lopez. So Ortiz is starting to move a little bit too much. Not a whole lot of offense coming back. Tail is starting to mount his attack little by little, little by little, inching closer and closer to Ortiz. And he hasn't really landed a big significant shot over the top besides that left hook. However, the body work that or, that, or two, that Lopez is putting in is definitely paying good dividends. See Ortiz with his mouth open now. Still moving a little less than he was like the last round. However, Lopez still trying to create those moments for himself to be able to land his offense. <laughs> Nothing landed there. Oh, check right hook from Ortiz. Had a few moments with the check right hook. So he's fully committed to that southpaw stance. I'm just so puzzled. I'm just puzzled by the fact that Lopez hasn't shut down that exit. Just pay attention to Ortiz moving to his right, moving to his right. Look, and there it is again. Hasn't set up a shot to, to cut that off. You can punch where he's moving or where he's going. That's part of cutting off the ring.
Right tail seemingly cutting it off now. However, Ortiz is nope, moving right. to the right again. But he's not setting up. He's not setting up the right hand. Circling to his right, staying away from that power hand of the world champion. A poultry connect percentage. He's only landed, Ortiz has only 16% of his total punches as we are through eight rounds. And through eight rounds, Mark Kriegel, how do you score? 77, 75, five rounds to three. Ortiz, he has studied Sandor Martin to great effect. It may not be the fight the fans want, but it's the fight that Ortiz wanted. Listen, Lopez is a better athlete. He's way more powerful, but to this point, he's getting out boxed. I think it might have changed in the seventh round. Of it. Timmy, Mark mentioned Sandor Martin. That, yep. was this, that was Heisman night of 2022 when it was in the eyes of many a very controversial decision that went for Tiafimo Lopez, one of his more lackluster nights of his career. In fact, Sandra Martin scored a knockdown of Tiafimo Lopez. It was in the second round, and then the seventh round almost appeared to score another knockdown, but it went as a decision win for Tiafimo. He's following the same script is Sandor Martin and also Cambosis the same script ring tail towards him ring tail towards him he will make mistakes he will get frustrated he will commit I will exit I will counter him on the way in however as of right now I see a whole lot of moving not enough punching for Ortiz not enough punching and so these rounds right here where it's a very low in punch output who do you think the judge is going to give it to? The guy that's coming forward, being the aggressor, trying to dictate. If you can't choose between the punches, the significant or more effective punches being landed by both guys, you go to ring generalship. Well, who's doing that? Teo is coming, controlling, coming forward, and dictating the pace. Ortiz turns the corner against Tiafimo, fires off a combination. Same story. Over and over. Rinse, wash, and repeat. There's a slip there as Tiafimo came okay. surging in towards that neutral corner on the attack against Ortiz. what he was doing game plan everything I asked him certain questions he he went the opposite way he wanted he didn't want no one to know his game plan I even asked him about the southpaw are you gonna start in the southpaw stance he said ah, I do it sometimes I don't know when I'm gonna do it yeah he's done it since the opening belt successfully at least defensively we have poultry numbers when it comes to offensive output and accuracy Ortiz is only landing 17 percent Lopez only landing 20 percent And you see, and this is the fight that Ortiz has to has to fight. It's a boxing match. He's out boxing tail at the moment because he's not going to win the power battle. He's not going to win the exchanges on the inside or at mid range, and he knows that. short uppercut on the inside right there perfectly timed by Teo. check hook again 
And the condition, the conditioning on Ortiz is right as of right now is brilliant. This is the 10th round, and he's still moving like it's the first round. Stop, stop, stop. Good. Ortiz continues to box and stay away and circle and make Tiafimo come to him, frustrate him when he can. But he himself is not creating a lot of offense, not creating a lot of separation. He's going to depend on the judges appreciating what he's doing. But his connect percentage is just at 17% himself. I mean, the offensive numbers of this fight to this point are not typical of what we have seen for a Tiafimo Lopez fight. Lopez landing 51, Ortiz landing 54. That's it. That's where we're at. And it's all because Lopez doesn't know how to cut off the ring. That's the reason why, Tess. Nothing has really changed since the opening bell. And that Cuban trainer that Ortiz hired got him ready for this fight. Got Jose Rodriguez yes. assisting in the corner with Rocky Gonzalez. Absolutely. And Ortiz was quick to say it's the best camp and the best corner he's ever had. <laughs> he's going around, circles around Lopez at the moment. For six more minutes and then put it in the hands of the judges. Steve Weisfeld, Tim Cheatham, and David Sutherland, veteran judges. Big right hand right there. To open there. up around 11. Double right hand from Teal. You rarely see that. Righty versus lefty. Double right hands like that. He has that ability to change speeds, change gears, and throw, do things like that with his athleticism. His father, who's also his trainer, was telling him, now is the time to do it. You have six minutes. Straight left hand down the middle. Oh. See the urgency still from Teo. Still hasn't figured out how to cut off and trap Ortiz. He's looking to draw him in. Ortiz has yet to take the full bait. And then Ortiz controlling the space between them with his jab, whereas Teo doing absolutely nothing with his jab. Just looking for one big shot to end the night. I'm curious to see them scorecards, Tess. I know we got a few more rounds to go. Yeah, just because Tiafimo is frustrated doesn't mean Tiafimo is losing. As Jermaine Ortiz has struggled to put it together to any consistent offense himself. So it's going to be quite the task of these three judges. Trying to rally, you see the fans trying to rally Teo. Greatest moment of his career came with a late rally. His 12th round against Vasily Lomachenko. Best offensive output anybody's ever had against Lomachenko. That is when he took the belts from Loma at 135 pounds. the same. Tio trying to trap, trying to trap. There you see Ortiz exiting. Wash, rinse, and repeat. More of the same each round. Same thing. We're going to have one round to decide this world championship. Fimo Lopez came into this fight as a seven to one favorite.
Tess, I tell you, that word great, we throw that word around a whole heck of a lot. But if Tail wants to be in, along that discussion, he's going to have to find a way to knock out this young man, Ortiz. ESPN bet. Look at the current odds as this thing has come down with the reality of what Ortiz has been able to accomplish. Can Tiafima Lopez find a way here? Can Ortiz show it up? Pace quickening as Ortiz continues to circle to the right. There's a right hand, a short right hand from Tiafimo. Tio seems to have the eye of the tiger right now. He's stocking, he's looking for it. But again, the tactical brilliance right now of Ortiz. Not winning this round at the moment, however, he's stopping those surges coming from Lopez by just stepping in and tying them up. Tiafimo trying to oh. there. Fires off the right hand. And Ortiz tying up. And again, Tess, to be considered great, you got to stay consistent. You got to be consistent all the way through. You just can't just be great one day. You got to continue to be great over and over, proving yourself over and over and over again. Well, I mean, Tiafimo, the word consistent doesn't apply to his career concerning the roller coaster ride that we've seen. He's been on top of the world against Loma, a shocking loss to Cambosis, some out of the ring drama that had him plateauing and not looking great when he went to 140, and then back up with the great ascent with a signature win against Taylor. And now this, this could be shocker. We Upset will see. Of the year. Upset of the year. Well, let's see here because Ortiz <laughs> offensively has not put much forward, but defensively and applying the strategy and staying away and frustrating Tiafimo, who never really found the answer at all. It'll be in the hands of the judges. Tiafimo Lopez. As they meet in the center of the ring, and Ortiz willing to trade here on the clock. As he just came out, Southpaw frustrated him, applied the strategy.